Hi, and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's quick review for 100 Seasons 1 through 3. This video is a part of a series of videos where I give a quick spoiler-free review of a show currently airing. These reviews are intended more for those who have not seen the show and want to know more about it and whether or not to watch it. Uh, this video is where I cover the first three seasons of the CW show, The 100. So the 100 was suggested to me by several of my regular commenters, one of them who suggested it many times, thanks for Nintendo Dio, and I finally got around to watching it. So it's hard to talk about this show without getting into spoilers, particularly when concerning seasons 2 and 3, as the structure of those seasons are heavily based off of things that happened in the season 1 that would be considered spoilers. But I'll try to keep it vague, however I will have to give away some spoilers from the first couple of episodes of the series because it's impossible to describe the plot otherwise. So, The 100 is apparently based off of a series of novels, and based off the nature of the show, I'm guessing they are YA novels, as the show does a, have a very strong Hunger Games feel to it. And there have been a barrage of YA post-apocalyptic novels that have been adapted to the screen since The Hunger Games hit, like uh, Maze Runner, Divergent, and several other failed attempts. And personally, I didn't really bother with any of those, and although I can't know for sure because I haven't seen those movies, but based on the previews and what critics are saying, I'd say that The 100 is much better. So the 100 tells the story of a post-apocalyptic world where Earth has been destroyed by nuclear war and several hundred years later the human civilization uh, lives and survives on a space station known as the Ark, which was in fact originally hobbled together from 12 different space stations. On the Ark, uh, supplies including air are very limited, which results in very strict laws, whereas uh, the punishment for any crime is death. However, However, an exception is made for those under 18 years old as they are imprisoned instead of killed. However, when the show begins, the leaders of the civilization decides to send 100 of these teenage prisoners to the surface of the earth to see if it is still inhabitable. Uh, we soon learn uh, this was done because the leaders were aware that the, uh, the Ark is dying soon and will be incapable of sustaining life, so are exploring the possibility of returning to Earth uh, by using the teenage uh, prisoners as top test subjects to see if it is yet habitable. When they get to the surface, uh, infighting breaks out amongst them, and a fugitive who snuck on board the ship named Bellamy assumes a leadership role amongst the 100. However, it quickly becomes apparent that the true leader, the one who really knows what's best for the group, is a girl named Clark, who, although never directly challenges Bellamy, they often butt heads for the leadership role. We also meet an assorted group of misfits amongst the 100, and together um, they, you know, soon discover that they're not alone, and humanity had not been completely wiped out as they had suspected, and on the surface lives a tribal peoples whom they refer to as the Grounders, and due to misunderstanding, war soon breaks out between them. Meanwhile, we get the continued storyline on the Ark as they struggle to deal with the uh, fact that the Ark is dying and trying to keep a close eye on the 100, where we follow such characters such as the Chancellor, Jaha, and his right-hand man, Kane, played by uh, Henry Ian Cusack, best known as Desmond. In fact, I keep expecting him to say, See you in another life, brother! But he's still a great actor. Anyway, his character often butts heads with the Ark's lead medical officer, who is also happens to be Clark's mother, Abigail Griffin. Uh, so we follow these characters as they try to deal with what's going on on the surface and how the station is dying. So that's basically the plot line of Season 1. However, as I said, Season 2 and 3 diverge greatly, but I can't get into that in any detail without giving away major spoilers. All the people who recommend the show to me suggested that Season 1 wasn't that great, and Seasons 2 and 3 were much better where the show really got good, and I'd have to say that I agree with that statement, although I wouldn't call the disparity that great. But Season 1 did feel more like a cliche YA teenage 
engaged story than seasons two and three, which were more complex and a lot more engaging and suspenseful. Season two was great, but there were elements that were kind of bothered me, like the ending was very risque and edgy in a way that I really liked, but at the same time had some plot holes that made it feel a tad bit contrived. But I would say overall, this was my clear favorite season out of the three, whereas season three, although I liked it better than season one, I found it to be a mixed bag. As while I watched it, I found myself constantly switching back from this show's awesome to this show sucks to it's awesome again to it sucks again and you know, kept going on in that cycle. So there were elements to season three I absolutely love, such as the exploration of how uh, the nuclear holocaust occurred in the first place, but other storylines which I felt were cheesy as hell. And the main problem I had with season three is it reminded me a lot of the show 24, where it seems the storyline of the season should be over, but they keep prolonging it by having something else go wrong or adding another problem, and this can feel very contrived. However, my problem with the show overall is that the role of the characters drastically changed throughout the course of the three seasons, and many of them in not at all believable ways, but in artificial and unbelievable ways, by the end of season three, many of the main characters behave in ways that are completely and totally inconsistent and out of character compared to their season one counterparts. So my rating for the 100 seasons 1 through 3 out of 10 is a 7 very good. Although it did come off as contrived at times and the overall theme was a bit too YA for my tastes as the, the obvious uh, that the main uh, target audience for this show are teenagers, it does present enduring and believable characters and does have really suspenseful and at times emotionally powerful stories that definitely make it worth watching. So as to the question of will I watch the next season, the answer is clearly yes. I am not entirely certain it will be great or that I'll even be happy with all the decisions that they make, but I am very eager to see these characters again and uh, see what they decide to do with them. And I do hope that they do cover interesting and new territory. However, I am curious to see uh, what the conflict in Season 4 is, as although they did end Season 3 in a cliffhanger of sorts, most of the main conflicts in the show had been resolved, and I see that there's a danger that Season 4 could simply rehash the same conflicts already done, but it's my hope that they will take it in a new direction which has the potential to be very good. So that's it for my quick review on the 100 seasons 1 through 3. I'll be back here next week for another quick review, this time for the show Stranger Things. In the meantime, you can check out my channel for many more quick reviews as well as many more videos on shows like Game of Thrones, Star Trek, Mr. Robot, Dark Matter, and more, so be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. Thanks a lot for watching.